sẽ sẽ nghe à, một cái nội dung mà chắc là sẽ có cái cái hàm lượng kỹ thuật nó cao hơn à, đó là chúng ta sẽ nghe về các cái tiêu chuẩn kỹ thuật yêu cầu đối với hoạt động kiểm tra bảo dưỡng à, đối với phương tiện giao thông điện thế thì là à, đây là bài mà do tiến sĩ Vitor uh, Rio Ravelo uh, uh, trình bày uh, cho chúng ta ngày hôm nay Tiến sĩ Vittorio Ravio là giám đốc của chương trình điện hóa sáng tạo toàn cầu tại trung tâm nghiên cứu FIAS. À, ông cũng đã có 29 năm kinh nghiệm và là chuyên gia trong cái, các cái lĩnh vực xe điện, à, tiêu chuẩn hóa xe điện và hệ thống truyền lực điện tử. À, và hiện tại thì ông là người lãnh đạo sáng kiến xe xanh cho cái tổ chức kỹ thuật tiên tiến và nghiên cứu ô nhiễm, à, nghiên cứu ô tô Stellan, Stellantix. Ông cũng đã tham gia giảng dạy với tư cách là giáo sư À, tại một số trường đại học à, và chủ yếu là về cái à, cái giảng dạy về cái hệ thống động cơ điện và động cơ hybrid hệ thống à, truyền thống động, à, truyền động cơ điện và ông cũng đã có xuất bản rất nhiều bài báo quốc tế về những cái nội dung này ạ. À. The next presentation I would like to invite the uh, doctor uh, Victorio Raven Hello to to share with us the topic about The more detail about the technical standard requirement for op operating, testing, and maintaining of the EVs, uh, Dr. Vittorio Ravello, please, I, I hand it for you. Thank you. Thank you to all to host me. Uh, welcome also my side. Uh, sorry because I will speak in English, but I hope next time my Vietnamese will be better and I can try to do directly in your language. Uh, as uh, uh, said, the uh, scope of this slide uh, is to give you an overview of the technical uh, standard required for operating and testing and maintaining electric vehicles. Uh, you will see it's uh, uh, mainly starting from cars, passenger cars, like commercial vehicle domain, uh, but uh, I have also put uh, in the presentation the reference to the specific standard for the two, three, four wheelers, the L category, uh, because I understood that in your um, scenario, in your oh, region, okay. this type of vehicle are very popular and are maybe the most uh, diffused. So if you can go to the next slide, thank you. Yes. Uh, is it not the second? Okay, thank you. Uh, the uh, first slide is uh, summing you up uh, a simple wording to clarify the difference between standards and homologation regulation. I, in my experience, at least in Europe, that is the region from which I come, there are uh, some uh, mismatching in the usage of the two words. They are considered equivalent while they are not. So to be clear, standards are technical document, typically refer as norm or requirement uh, that represent uh, a general understanding of how to do something technically speaking. So are the outcome of activity performed by experts of the field that has a value independently from the place in principle and independently from the company interest, they are technical. On the contrary, when you put, for instance, a vehicle in production, you need to pass a homologation test, an homologation procedure. These tests and procedures uh, are generally based on the local uh, bodies that is in charge of this process. And when in the process of homologation, they are using technical steps, a technical test, a technical evaluation, they typically refer to the standards. So in general, standards are feeding the regulation, the homologation regulation, but they are not the same. The first are technical practice, the standards. Uh, in the main part of the country, they are kindly suggested, but they are not mandatory, but it depends case by case. Why the homologation standards is something on which we want to produce and put in production a product has to be compliant. Okay, going to the next. Okay, here you see uh, the scenario for Europe. 
in Europe, we use the UNECE homologation uh, rules and also for electric vehicles. Uh, these have a lot of regulation, specific regulation in common with standard vehicle because also the electric vehicle has tires, has doors, has mechanical parts. But there are some regulation that are more specific for the electrical case. And I highlighted them in the list. So the regulation 10, that is about the electromagnetic compatibility is also something that a conventional car has to be compliant with, but in the electrical, due to the electrical high level of power manager is in general more severe. There is the R85 that is about the performance and the twin of the R85 is R68 that is uh, for measure the, high, the maximum speed of the vehicle. Then there is the most relevant regulation when you want to put in production an electric vehicle, at least in our region, that is the R100, because the R100 is the one following all the electrical, thermal, mechanical, and safety elements of the vehicle and of its electrical components. This is particularly severe for high voltage application. In automotive domain, high voltage means more than 66 zero volt. So the vehicle shown by the colleagues in the first presentation are in general all belonging to this category. In the two wheelers, maybe not, but at least the classical vehicle, yes. And this is very important because take care also of the electrical behavior, for instance, of the vehicle after a crash in order to be sure that also after a crash, both for the occupants and who has to uh, act to support the uh, post-crash condition like fire brigades uh, can operate under safety condition. And then the R101, that is a regulation also existing for standard car, for the electric is focusing on consumption and energy consumption and electric range. In the classical car, R101 is also very important because cover all the noxious emission of the vehicle that in this case are avoided thanks to the electrical propulsion. Be aware that also in case of vehicle transformation, it is a common practice, particularly electric vehicle, special vehicle, and the transformation starts from a thermal engine based vehicle. So you start from a thermal engine based, a two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler, what you like, and you make it electric. And in case the maker of the donor vehicle, the thermal, is uh, having an agreement who, with the transformer, that means uh, make uh, applicable all the homologation procedure for the part not modified. For the one modified, the company making the transformation is in charge of the check and the responsibilities. So also for transformed vehicle, the list of the regulation mentioned before are typically applied again because the vehicle in general move from thermal to electric become very different in these parts. Okay, going on. Uh, standards, we said. Standards are at worldwide level in general managed by this organization, ISO, that stands for International Organization for Standardization. That's true, particularly for thermal combustion engine based uh, car, but also for electrical, so for what we call vehicles, independently if they are passenger cars, commercial vehicles, buses, two wheelers, and so on. Uh, in particular, under ISO, that works, as I said, at worldwide level, there is a lot of technical committees. The one dealing with road vehicles, so also cars and in general, what we call uh, wheel vehicle, uh, road vehicle, is the committee number 22. And the committee number 22, TC Technical Committee 22, cover all the different typologies of vehicle. As you can see by the list that in the meantime is coming, maybe with another click, uh, it's possible to see, oh, thank you a lot, all the others. As you can see, uh, under the TC 22, all the different types of vehicle from the smaller two wheelers up to the three, four wheelers and the big trucks are managed. Going to the next, I put in the slide a list of the most relevant subcommittees, because each committee has a lot of subcommittees, uh, of interest for our discussion. And in particular, are these uh, uh, six. 
I want to highlight particularly the number 37 that is specifically devoted to electric vehicle. And so for us, it's very important. And the 38 for who deals with two, three wheelers, because particularly for the two wheelers, uh, motorcycle mopeds, uh, is common, at least the practice, that they start from the uh, regulation, the standards, sorry, uh, pro prepared by the subcomic 37, so by the one devoted to the electric uh, in general vehicles, SC 37 in general cover vehicle from M1 category to the upper, and uh, translate, uh, apply, modify, make uh, more fit in the scope, this regulation uh, in the field, this standard, sorry, in the field of uh, uh, the um, uh, two wheelers. Uh, in particular, SC37, the one dealing with propeller electric vehicle, is organizing multiple work groups. Maybe there are also some other two with another click. Thank you. They can come down and then another one. Okay, thank you a lot. And you see there are five working groups that cover very different areas from safety uh, to performance and consumption, the VG2, to the part about the charging, the number three that deals a lot with batteries, and the number four that is about the propulsion system, so motors, inverters, all the components specific of electric vehicle, the one with the previous presentation, the charge, all one very deeply and correctly presented by the colleagues in the first presentation. And last, the uh, requirement for the energy transfer. That means how to transfer energy from the main to the vehicle, electrical charging, but now more and more also the opposite pathway, the so-called vehicle to grid, so the chance to use the vehicle to transfer energy to the grid. Going to the next, you see uh, the standards uh, referred to the performance. Uh, I don't want to go too much in deep, but you see here, uh, anytime you see ISO means uh, standard done by ISO, the number is the number of identification, and in brackets, there is the date of the last edition of the document. These documents are periodically verified, updated, and improved, but the one you see in the brackets is the running version, at least now. As you can see, uh, in the upper part, there is SC37 standards for um, the, um, for the uh, performance of the vehicle, while in SC38, you see the twins of the standards you see in the upper part that has been uh, realized, written, and uh, published by the SC38 expert, starting from the 37 electric vehicle ones, adapting them to the case of the two wheelers. That in some times is the same, some other ask for very different needs due to the difference of the vehicle itself. Going to the next slide, thank you. Here there are uh, standards about the components. Uh, you see the upper part regards a test about uh, um, the electrical part of them, while the lower speak about the uh, test specification for the performance test mainly for the different parts. With another couple of click, maybe you see also a picture showing you as an example of motor and inverter, and with another click, you should see also, sorry, okay, uh, the full picture of them. So these are standards written in SC37 to make possible to test, verify, also for the need of some company to buy and verify, certify that the components that they are taking are in line with their expectation. Uh, at the moment are written for cars and uh, uh, light commercial vehicle. I feel that as it always happens, these are very new, as you can see, they are 2019, 2021, so last two, three years. In the next years, uh, if needed, uh, the guys of the two wheeler area will adopt them or will modify them to be more again fitting on their needs. Going to the next slide. Here is another subcommittee, the number 32, that deals with uh, um, electric, electronic components, electric electronic components and general aspect. This is relevant because defining the first standard environmental condition for the testing, you know, automotive or in general road vehicle are not like a device in a plant, 
are subjected to very different weather condition, high temperature, low temperature, vibration, humidity. And so the condition of testing are very, very important. And then all the part regarding cables and connectors. In particular, you see in the two small pictures, orange cables on the left, orange connector on the right, that is in our domain, the color used to make easy also for maintenance purpose to identify components that are in general subjected to high voltage. Meaning that during maintenance, hopefully the battery is disconnected and so no current is flowing through them, but maybe not. And so who has to make maintenance is immediately able to see where there is a potential high voltage to be managed accordingly with all the personal protection equipment of the case. Going to the next slide, thank you. Here, the safety, as I mentioned before, safety is very, very important. In particular, the mother standards for safety in automotive electrical safety is this one, the 6469. Okay, thank you. Uh, that is dealing with different parts. As you see, there is a first part dealing with this strange wording, RESS, that at the end for us means battery. The battery system is an example of RESS. The wording of standard guys is not so easy to be understood of who is not in the field. The second on vehicle, and the third is the one about the voltages and the shock and the arc, so the uh, electrical safety hazard, as are called plus other specific tests. One very important is the um, part four, because is the one dealing in specific with the post crash check of safety. So the vehicle has to guarantee also after homologation crash that some parts still stay insulated and so uh, limiting the risk for the occupants and who has to uh, act on the vehicle as, as I said before, five brigades. In the lower part of the slide, you see the twin of the, of the standards for the two wheelers are the adaptation of the automotive car standard. And the two pictures show you the most common electrical risk, the most common electrical hazard. The upper is the typical shock. So be in contact with two parts in high voltage. And in this case, your body become a conductor. And so current flow through the body with a lot of possible risk problem, direct and indirect in some cases also causing the, the death of the, of the operator. So very, very important to be correctly managed. And in the lower picture, you see the arc. Arc means when you try to open a conductor in which current is flowing and the current try to flow through the air through the blue line you see in the picture. As I said before, be aware that we use in automotive 60 volt, 6.0 as threshold between what we call class A and class B. In class B, all protection has to be applied. Cars are in general all B class components. If you are in A class, so under 60, you can touch high voltage without no risk. So there is not the upper problem, the shock. There is still the arc. Arc can take place also with one volt. It's a matter of current, not of voltage. But not having the high voltage problem is a good point. And some small uh, two wheelers, for instance, are able to operate with voltage under 60. And that uh, makes largely more safe and easier the operation. And maybe, for instance, also the replacement of the battery. You see the scooter in which is directly the user to replace the battery. That's possible in general because the battery are light or small, but main of all because they are low voltage. Going to the next, uh, standards on power transfer. These are the two mother standards, the first two of the list that has been covering the upper, the first, the conductive, so current flowing through a cable, conductive means that, and the second through air, so the wireless. Uh, now you see in the second part of the slide, there has been a new standard, the 5474 under uh, progress, in progress, that is managing all them together. So you see in the different five parts, are cover both the general aspect and the ACDC uh, energy exchange with cable, part two and three, the magnetic wireless, the part four, and very relevant for, for instance, buses, uh, at least in Europe, is the part five that cover the issue of the automatic charging. Maybe you have seen it's common to have uh, more and more big buses uh, that in general at the bus stop, while people are entering and leaving the bus, are making a quick 
partial charge in order to have a bus with less battery in respect of one that has to make all the day trip, but this asks for very important safety condition to be satisfied. In the lower bullet point, you see what is today the translation for the two wheelers. Uh, you see it's just one standard. That means that I expect that when the 5474 will become final standard in, uh, in uh, operation, at this point also the uh, two wheelers uh, colleagues will uh, maybe make more deep uh, development of their specific standard. Going to the next slide. Uh, this was the world of ISO. Now we enter for a few minutes in the world of IEC. IEC is the International Electrotechnical Commission that again works at worldwide level, but is focused on the electrical stuff. So covers all what is electrical in your experience. So also for instance, uh, a lift is managed with regulation by them or your computer has electrical safety. It's not automotive only, let me say. At the same time, they have a specific technical committee, the number 69, that deals with all the electrical aspect of the connection. When you are charging your vehicle or discharging to the grid the vehicle, the vehicle to grid, both if it is pure electric or it is plug-in hybrid, in this case, your vehicle uh, becomes a component that interacts with the grid. And so it's very important to have standards that correctly regulate the safety, the communication, the safety, and also the security, because there is a matter of payment, and so avoid people uh, stolen your money, or also matter of cyber security, or also of a cyber attack, because the vehicle under charge can be, if not correctly controlled, potentially a way to make an, an accident. So who want to make terrorism attack in future can see this vehicle as a good uh, element for them. So these standards are very, very important. Going to the next slide, uh, you see here the long list of the standard for the conductive charging. These are all the standard dealing with the charging of the vehicle by the grid with the cable. Let me say this way, you see in the picture the cable with the two plugs, like your computer connected to the wall, let me say. Uh, if you can go also in the next slide where there is the remaining part of this long list, I don't want to bore you too much. Uh, the difference is that the second one, this slide you see now, is dealing with the wireless. So the one before was dealing with cable, as I said to you. This one is dealing with wireless. Wireless means, uh, in, like in the picture, that maybe you have a, a emitter of electricity in the ground, air between the uh, the vehicle and the, um, and the road, and the um, second side of your system, the receiver applied under your car. This is more common today for buses than cars, but obviously make the charging experience more safe, more easy for the user. Keep in mind that maybe as you seen and going upper and upper the power of charging, cables are becoming huge, big, and so also the connection of the big connector is not so simple and wireless from this perspective is more, um, more uh, comfortable. Going to the next, one page devoted to the connectors. Connector is a very important part because without them you cannot operate the system. You see on the left side the typical uh, US and Japanese standard uh, for uh, AC charging on the left and the American for the DC charging still on the left. On the right of the first picture, sorry, the European I was mentioning, on the right you see the American and for the um, AC charging is also true for Japanese, but these two, the picture on the left covers the typical different option uh, satisfying all Europe and all North America at least. Uh, depending if it is standard AC charging upper connectors or it is the DC fast charging, the lower two, that are, as you can see bigger. While on the right, uh, you see a typical standardized connector for smaller vehicle. To make safe charging, for instance, of two wheelers, uh, this is the solution that uh, IEC propose for everybody, is the so-called type three. That does not mean that you at home can charge your two-wheeler with your standard shook or, or classical plug, but with lower safety uh, element and levels. So is the leave and left to the end user to be confident that the charge is not uh, creating over temperatures, problems, and so on. Going to the next. 
a one very short view of the complex domain that means charge a vehicle or to transfer energy from the vehicle to the grid. Uh, in general, as a user, car maker, and as we in our life, uh, have in mind that the problem is to connect your plug with the socket, and that's all. It's not so easy uh, because behind the socket, uh, you see in the picture the equivalent fuel station of the, of the icons, this one, thank you a lot. You see there are also uh, other communication protocols to make possible that the uh, energy flow and the communication goes to the energy producer because what is behind the plug is a word. It's not simply behind the big plant making electricity for your plug. No, there are, in this case, company dealing the charging point, company aggregating them together, called charging service operator, and then going up and up to mobility service provider, transmission system operator, production system operator. Each step of this loop is managed with a standard that cover the communication between the two parts connected. The communication, as I said, is important, particularly with the increase of power of charging, to be sure that the system operates correctly, not creating risk for the user and not risk to the also, let me say, uh, security side of the story. Yeah, you see the ISO 15118 left side is the standard for the communication car to charging point and it is in charge of ISO because it's car driven, vehicle driven, while the other two uh, are IEC standard because these take place in the grid side as we can imagine as a user of them. Going on. The next slide, thank you. Here there is the list of the different parts of the 15118. In this domain is very important the part 20, so the third of the list, 20, because it's the one that enables the bidirectional exchange of energy, meaning that the car can become, the vehicle can become sometimes also a seller of energy power to the grid for make profit depending on the tariff of the timing in which you exchange energy or to contribute to sustain and to stabilize the grid. And this will become probably an unpublished standard beginning of next year. It took more than five, six years of long discussion between 400 companies of the two domains and user, we, and a grid side company because it's very complex and it is very important to write it in the proper way. Going to the next. Here, the standard for the bidirectionality uh, also on the very side, these are the IEC standard dealing with the two, uh, com the communication of energy, transfer of energy from the, the grid to the car, as you can imagine for charging of the battery, but also the opposite. In particular, the last, that is very, very new activity in progress, the 63302 with its three parts, uh, is a very important standard because uh, try to see the all these elements as a system. As you understood, when there are a lot of players in the chain, it's difficult to be confident that everybody works together properly. The aim of this last standard is to look at the other standard and to harmonize them in order to make the end user happy and the grid satisfied, because otherwise it's not a obviously win-win model. Going to the next slide, uh, you find the particular for the two wheelers, very important standard on the swapping of the battery. In the case of cars, uh, is a dream coming up and down in the decades. Up to now, we will not accept some Chinese solution by NEO and establish effective solution, but for two wheelers, wheelers is already a reality and can be a very interesting way to decouple the charging time by, by the time to stay waiting for it, meaning I charge the battery offline and I simply swap the battery at the station, making the experience of the, the stop of the car, of the vehicle in general, shorter. Uh, the last slide of the, of the slide is the one dealing with the low voltage case. So it's very important, particularly for the two wheelers, while the first three are generally applicable both for high voltage and low voltage vehicles. Going to the next. There is a list of standards for repair and maintenance. They are, in general, fitting large volumes. They are trying to find a way to standardize process also of action on the road when the vehicle has a problem, but they fit very well mass market volumes application. 
while going to the next uh, are the two important, um, next slide please, the two important standard that we follow at least in Europe to operate on the vehicle, both maintenance, both transformation, both repair in safe way. The first is a European standard, let me say standard, the AEN 50110 applicable in all Europe. That is the one that define all the issue of safety, the how to make the vehicle safe because to operate, how to train people that has to do the check and so on. As said before, for two wheelers at lower voltage, less critical, but some problem due to the arc, the short circuit can anyway take place. While the lower, that is a European regulation, define the so-called personal protective equipment. So what you have to uh, have as user to operate on high voltage in safe condition, or also on low voltage for arc. You see there are gloves, there are uh, and glasses, there are helmets, there are screens, there are dresses, but not only because in the personal protective equipment are also included the tools you use in the operation, for instance, the screwdrivers, and the instrument used to measure, like a voltmeter. All of them has to have characteristic that make them safe. Otherwise, the risk comes from a short coming from your screwdriver or so on. I feel in your country, in Asia, there will be equivalent. These are the two mother elements that any, everybody that has to operate on electric vehicle has to know very well. Knowing this very well, electric vehicle becomes better than traditional. Not knowing then the risk is that you leave problems on one word and you find other different problems in this new one. Going to the last slide of the presentation. Here I put, uh, coming from the previous um, training we had last week, uh, in Nepal with Nepal colleagues, uh, they ask me what's in the other places because I show you something that is worldwide or European, but not always the country follow the worldwide regulation. Uh, in particular, American people like a lot to stay on their standards. Uh, SEI, that is uh, the Society of Automotive Engineers and IEEE, that is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers produce a standard, the first in the domain of ISO, the second in the domain of IEC, that uh, are uh, applicable and used uh, mainly in North America. In general, this number means that the American colleagues do not participate to the global standardization ISO IEC, but obviously they try to harmonize uh, the uh, new standard worldwide to their one, or anyway, seeing the positive of that, uh, guarantee a coherency among their standards and the global. Sometimes their standards are the starting point for the global or are used uh, waiting for them globally. A typical example is in the autonomous driving where the um, level uh, two, three, four, five of the autonomous driving today worldwide recognized comes from an SE standard, waiting maybe to have a ISO in future. In the following, you see the Chinese scenario that uh, obviously for you is very important. China is one of the bigger producers of components in this domain. Here is explained how they operate. They have a, a, a SAC, Standardization Administration of China, that uh, deals with standard. They have different standards. The standard goes under the acronym GB. G stands for uh, out sorry for my wrong maybe uh, pronunciation. Uh, standards and these are or mandatory means like a law in, in this case are GB only or are uh, let me say highly recommended the GB slash T. In general the technical belongs to the second category and they have produced a lot of standards. In general uh, up to some years ago they were uh, taking the international standard as starting point to maybe adapt or accept them as a whole, depending on the case of their needs locally. Now they are becoming more proactive. If you go to the next slide, I show you, for example, here you see the AC connector for charging. You see type one, two, three, the one I showed you before, the first three column of the table are under the IC standard shown before, the type one, mainly North America and at Japan, because there there is a single phase distribution, so it's a connector fit in the needs. Type two for Europe, that is 
single phase and three phase because we in Europe have in some country like Germany also three phase directly at home and the type three for the smaller vehicle. And you see the Chinese, the Chinese graphically seen seems very, very similar to the type two, the European one is a single phase with a two phase, three phase applicability. But there are some differences probably coming from different needs they had because don't forget that we cannot modify completely the electrical grids of a country just because we want to make electric vehicles. We have to take care of what was before. Here, Chinese come after uh, and uh, you see 2011. And so they some way started from our standard. If you go in the next, uh, you see a similar comparison for DC charging. And here the story is different. You see the Tesla solution on the upper, on the right side, it is different. Tesla is, is standard. The CCS fitting one North America, two Europe. The CHAdeMO, CHAdeMO is the Japanese standard that is based on CAN and not on PLC communication. The first Chinese, the GV slash T, that was some way a twin of the CHAdeMO. And now the new GBT, the new GBT is a common standard, a joint standard between Chinese standardization body and Japanese one to have higher power. You see by the first row, they are moving to power close to one megawatt, particularly for the very extremely fast charging and buses. This standard will be something probably according to what is coming, the upper power applicable one, and it will be still also by the Chinese. So they are recovering, as you know, very fast and are becoming also in this field in when useful and needed the forerunner, let me say. Going to the next slide, I put in the last four, uh, five slides, three, four slides, something about the neuron cap evaluation method. It's something not compulsory, even not to do it to homologate vehicle, but it's a way we use in Europe to give through STAR method an evaluation of how much a vehicle is really safe for the end user, the adult and the child occupants, the first two, but also from who can be areaed by the vehicle, like pedestrian and like bicycles, the racer. And the last element on the purple color, the one dealing with uh, the new system supporting the driver, like uh, ACC, ADAS, uh, so all the system uh, plus or minus automated, automatic that help the driver to be less dangerous for who is around the car. In the next slide, you will find a more detailed description of this. You can click sometimes because there are a lot of files. Thank you very much. Thank you, great. I don't want to bore you too much, but here you see the more clear definition of the five four areas. The most newest are the child part, more deep for uh, crash condition and behavior after. The third about the uh, bicycle user, as mentioned before, and the four that is added to take care that new cars, for instance, are taking more and more account of that. Uh, going to the last slide, uh, that is the next. In the last, uh, I have put uh, one very important reference, at least in Europe, uh, four wheelers, uh, so L category vehicle, the same three wheelers, two wheelers, uh, can be homologated without crash test, differently from cars. Cars not passing crash test cannot be homologated. Um, up to, up to now, the smaller vehicle, yes, because the assumption is that they have lower speed and due to the lower speed are less dangerous and so on. And luckily, they stay today in a place where big cars, big trucks are also operating. And so even if they by themselves can be not risky, can become risky if close to the other vehicle. So what has been done by your own cap is to define another star rate for a category different from the passenger cars shown before, in which they put two tests, two full scale crash tests at 50 km per hour, full frontal impact against a barrier like the one you see in the picture, uh, and a side impact test, 50 km per hour, so something coming 90 degrees to the side of the car to verify which is the behavior. As you can see, in, in this case, 50 km per hour is not uh, Formula One speed. That's what could happen with the four wheeler not designed according to the safety concern. That could be, in my opinion, for country where there are a lot of smaller vehicles, an important element to be considered to help the process. That's all. I want just to remind you something verbally. Um, a UTT, so the University of Transport Technology, year one, and in particular, Professor Kiem has done a very valuable job. 
uh, to compare all the standards I present to you with your local standards and product certification that are called TCVN, the standards, and QCVN, the second. Uh, there is a document prepared by him that is available at also to Solution Plus, uh, in which there is a table putting all the standards I show you and the regulation, and on the side of that, in another column, all what is in force at Vietnamese reality level. That's very, very powerful because it creates to you an immediate correlation. Uh, by that, uh, he has been able also to identify which are the new steps that at right, Vietnamese level you have to do to be 100% in line with this process. And he has cited in particular for the transformation of the two wheelers with internal combustion engine to two wheelers with batteries, uh, three areas where at local level, at Vietnam level, you need to make a uh, standard level more activity to have local standards. And these are the swapping of the battery, the fast charging that are two very important part in the trends, and the uh, docks, the charging docks. That's for standard. For the regulation, I at the beginning presented to you the regulation 136, the one dealing with safety for two wheelers, he said that today is still not available a one-to-one um, -one version of that for the uh, Vietnam reality. But that's, in my mind, is a very powerful way to um, have a guidance uh, how to do in the next year and how to use today the existing standard for your purpose. That's all. Thank you for your passion. Sorry again for the English. And if there are questions, uh, I can try to answer in English. Uh Thank you very much, Dr. Vitu, for very uh, technical and informative uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. And we can go around the world about the technical standards uh, from the European, Euros, US, then we come back to the Chinese. And I thought that there are some questions for you in the uh, book chat. So can you read it or uh, uh, answer directly? Uh, or can I ask Mr. Van Fee to, to, to have? If, if you direct... want, I can try to answer to the one I read in the chat. I see in the chat a question coming from Mr. Yes. Van Fee. Sorry for the, for the pronunciation. Uh, yes. The first is about uh, homologation standard. You can do in principle what you like in the sense that each local body uh, depending on the agreement that has at a regional level, I don't know if uh, Vietnam is linked some way to the Asian, but in principle is the Vietnam body that make the homologation and so can define uh, how to adapt, modify or make new the regulation according to the local needs. I suggest mm -hmm. to use the existing, uh, if you're not, to, to use the existing standard, for instance, the one mentioned before, the R136 as a basis, and then modify, adapt, change it according to the needs. In general, as I said before, regulation does not mean you, are, you have to do what the European, what the American does, because maybe in your case, there are a reason why it's not 100% applicable. It's a good starting point, but it's something you have, that has to be adopted with a very critical mindset, meaning verifying if it fits your needs or not. And the second, uh, what the kind of priority regulation uh, should be implemented for EV. I feel that what I said about the uh, document of uh, Dr. Kim some way, I hope answer already, meaning that at this stage, what seems more urgent and to be done are the part regarding the uh, new ideas, new technologies to make the charging phase faster, meaning the swapping of the battery on one side and the DC fast charging on the other. The other question, if we are charged wirelessly, will there be any policy changes? Uh, what do you mean with policy? In the sense that if you mean if there are different safety requirements, uh, there are good points. One point is that uh, due to how the system is done, the uh, emitter, the one in the ground or in the upper part if it is a bus, and the one in the vehicle are the couple. It's like a transformer. And that makes a complete galvanical insulation between the ground system and the vehicle. So make it more robust. But anyway, 
you have to be confident that the system is the same level of protection in respect of shock, in respect of arc that you have in the standard. Mm. The other point that's important, be aware of the EMC issue. Mm. The EMC issue, when you have a system open, like it is the one mentioned, has to be covered very, very deeply. If the charge take place with vehicle not in motion, like a stop, like a parking, in general, it's easy to be taken under control. Other story, if you have in mind something that has some example in the world, for instance, in Korea, there is a bus to invent, that is the charging in motion. So imagine to have the primary, the emitter, all in the ground of the road and your vehicle moving over, so continuously switching between one coil to the other. In this case, due to, to the possible disalignment of the vehicle in respect of the primary, the way in which the electromagnetic field can move around the, the air can be different. And here, the issue has to be verified with more uh, attention. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vito. So I, I, I found that there's some, uh, some other questions, but it seems that we don't have enough time to explain here. So we will may come back on uh, uh, try up the, the answer and the question later. Yeah, uh, anyway, you. keep in mind for any question, don't hesitate mm. to write me and I will also answer directly to who needs it. Thank you very much uh, for the. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> yes. Kính thưa các anh chị, thì chúng ta vừa mới nghe một bài trình bày rất là rất là kỹ thuật và và đầy thông tin của 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 của, của tiến sĩ Vito thì à, tiến sĩ Vito đã cho chúng một số cái cái điểm mà chúng ta cần lưu ý đấy là um, chúng ta vừa mới nghe về tất cả các cái cái loại tiêu chuẩn đối với à, đối với xe điện đối với xe điện à, hiện tại ở trên à, trên à, và đang áp dụng trên thế giới từ cái UN ECE cho đến ISO cho đến các cái tiêu chuẩn của cái hội đồng kỹ thuật là 22 và của cả cái cái tiêu chuẩn liên quan đến um, IEC và hội đồng kỹ thuật uh, 69 cũng như các loại tiêu chuẩn của 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 Mỹ và của châu Âu thế thì trong cái này thì có một số cái điểm mà chúng ta uh, tiến sĩ cũng đã lưu ý với chúng ta rằng là đối với các cái loại uh, tiêu chuẩn đối với xe điện thì chúng ta sẽ có hai cái cái thứ nhất là đối với những cái cái thiết bị và phương tiện xe điện mà chúng ta sản xuất nguyên chiếc uh, là tất cả các cái uh, các cái thiết bị uh, của cái phương tiện điện này thì chúng ta được sản xuất một cách đồng bộ tuy nhiên thì chúng ta cũng sẽ có một số cái loại phương tiện khác mà chúng ta có thể rằng là um, chúng ta có thể sửa chữa hay nâng cấp hay là modify một số cái cái hợp phần nào đấy à, để để mà nó đáp ứng được các yêu cầu của xe điện thì đối với cái trường hợp này thì chúng ta cũng à, sẽ có các yêu cầu à, trách nhiệm về kiểm tra kiểm định hợp chuẩn đối với à, cái cái nhà sản xuất hay đối với cái đơn vị mà thực hiện những cái à, những cái thay đổi kỹ thuật đối với cái một cái một số cái hợp phần à, nào đấy trong cái phương tiện điện à, ngoài ra thì là thì là có một số cái À, cái nội dung có năm cái cái nội dung chính đối với phương tiện đối với tiêu chuẩn phương tiện điện đấy là đối với an toàn điện à, đối với kết nối đối với sạc điện chưa cái cái vị trí truyền điện hay là đối với hệ thống điện hay đối với à, cái ắc quy cái khu vực mà mà à, mà lưu trữ điện ở trên phương tiện à, ngoài ra thì là thì là à, qua các cái tiêu chuẩn à, tiến sĩ à, Vito đã nêu thì chúng ta ông cũng lưu ý rằng là đối với tất cả các cái loại tiêu chuẩn ở đây thì là à, chúng ta xem xét như là một cái điểm khởi đầu để mà chúng để mà để mà các cái nước khác có thể là xây dựng những cái bộ tiêu chuẩn mà hài hòa hơn phù hợp với cái điều kiện và nhu cầu địa phương hơn thì cũng không à, nhất thiết là phải phải áp dụng một trăm phần trăm tất cả những cái yêu cầu của những cái bộ tiêu chuẩn đấy thì tùy thuộc vào cái cái điều kiện của từng gia của từng địa phương thì chúng ta có thể là phát triển à, được một những cái hệ thống À, tiêu chuẩn của mình nhưng mà ông cũng lưu ý rằng là đối với à, cái vận hành và các phương tiện điện từ cái hai bánh cho ba bánh cho đến bánh thì chúng ta cần thiết rất là có cần thiết rằng là chúng ta phải tiêu chuẩn hóa tất cả các cái loại tất cả các cái yêu cầu đối với cái phương tiện điện tại vì phương tiện điện thì là à, thì nó liên quan rất nhiều đến cái tính an toàn tính năng an toàn trong quá trình vận hành ông cũng đã lấy một cái ví dụ 
à, đối với châu Âu, à, đối với Trung Quốc chẳng hạn thì Trung Quốc cũng à, cũng đã có à, những cái thay đổi cụ thể hay là những cái điều chỉnh nhất định để mà đưa vào à, dựa trên những cái tiêu chuẩn quốc tế để được xây dựng các cái tiêu chuẩn cho quốc gia của mình. À, thế thì đấy là một trong những điểm lưu ý của ông thì rất cảm ơn ông rất nhiều à, đã, đã chia sẻ cái cái bài à, trình bày rất là khoa học của à, cái phần tiếp theo thì cũng là một phần rất quan trọng thì chúng ta sẽ 